I have uploaded the JXL files with the scan and image data onto my desktop into a folder titled TopoSite. It is important to have your data formatted correctly for import. As shown here, the job file is on the same level with the folder that contains all of your data. This folder holds the images and the RWI files where the point clouds are stored. It is important to note that the top level JXL file and folder name have the same name, and that the folder has the name files as an extension. Select the JXL and open it with a text editor. In this case, I will use Notepad++. This will bring up the JXL and inside is an XML-like format where you can view your information and edit anything if necessary. Now that this file is on the desktop, it can be imported into a new TBC project. There are two ways to create a new project. Select this option, or on the top part of the ribbon, there is a button to create a new default project. In this case, I will select to create a new project from the start page. Here is a list of available project templates. Users can define templates and save them for use here. In this case, I will select the US Survey Foot template for that is in which the units of the field data was collected. The general TBC display is now visible. On the left is the Project Explorer which contains all data in the project. On the top ribbon are tabs which contain groups of the commands. The first thing we want to do is import our data from the field. You can find this command under the Home tab. This opens the Import Command window. Here you can select this button to browse to a folder. I will select the TopoSite folder on my desktop. Files in this folder as well as their type are displayed in the import command. Here we have the JXL exported from the field as well as its version number. At the bottom of this command window, there is a settings option to select merge options if existing data in the project is similar or the same as the import data. In this case, I will leave it as ask me on import and select import. Once the scan data has been imported, TBC will automatically colorize the point cloud data. Dependent on the size and quantity of scans and images, this process can take anywhere from one second to several minutes. You can skip this process by clicking stop and colorize later. Once the data is imported, a dialog is displayed prompting the user for the option to view the import report. In the import report, any issues that were found by TBC on importing the file are displayed. Closing out of this window, we can see that there is now various types of data in our project. Use the mouse wheel to zoom, and we can see that there is scan data and total station observations. On the left-hand side, the Project Explorer has several new object types. The first is points. You can select the arrow beside the point name to display any additional information. I will select the point, right-click, and a display of various commands appears. I'll scroll to the bottom and select properties. Here, you can see point ID, feature coding, description, and coordinate information associated to that point. The Properties pane is very useful for performing checks and changes on your data. The next object we have are Aztec points. These are points measured in the field using Trimble Access's stakeout method. They display the stakeout method as well as the grid deltas associated. This is useful for making check measurements and stake and design data. After the Aztec points, there is a point cloud region. On import, all scan data from the JXL is merged into one default point cloud region. In the properties, you can see the name, number of points in the cloud, as well as the render and settings for the appearance. Below this is the scan information. The first icons denoted in the brackets by S's are survey stations. These contain the information for that specific total station setup, such as instrument height, atmospheric corrections, and instrument errors. Selecting the arrow next to each station displays each scan associated to it. The properties of the scan include the number of points as well as display settings. The photo station objects in this situation are created for each survey and scan station performed in the field with photographs. Below are the media files which contain any additional images such as those taken using the plummet camera of the SX-10. These can be viewed from the properties as shown here or by right clicking on the image and display in the media file. A display of imported files in this project are displayed under the Imported Files object. The imported JXL is located here. 
To change the data displayed in the TBC views, you can select the View Filter Manager. This is docked in the same pane as the Project Explorer where you can toggle between the two displays. In the View Filter Manager, you can turn off different types of objects such as raw data, photogrammetry, point clouds, scans, layers, and other objects located in the Project Explorer. If I select the arrow beside the Scans tab, this will turn off the visibility of all the scans in the project. I can also select individual scans to toggle. As well, I can turn off the total station observations. Located at the top of the pane is the ability to create a new filter called Copy View Filter. You can give the filter a name and select the specific files to display here. There are several options on top as well, such as Delete in Filters, Zoom Extents, Isolate in Objects, Hidden Objects, View Only, and Advanced View Filter Settings, which allows users to make their selection sets before applying them to the current. The primary view used in TBC is the Plan View. This is a two-dimensional grid representation of the data contained in your project. You can use the mouse wheel to pan and zoom around the view. There is also the option to open a three-dimensional view. This view and window allows users to explore the data in a three-dimensional perspective. Using the mouse wheel, I can pan and zoom through the view. There's an option for 3D view settings in the 3D view dropdown. Here, you can select preset views, change the rotation display, and vertical exaggeration. This is very useful when displaying surfaces. In this case, it will not be changed. Below this is the display mode. The orthographic view displays objects at an unambiguous view, therefore objects appear at the same scale. While in perspective view, objects with more depth provide a more real-world look. There is an option to change the orientation of the z-axis. In most cases, users will keep the z-axis up, but for exploring point clouds in difficult locations, unchecking this option fixes the view window from the z-axis. Other view options will be explored later on in this video series. The next step is to save the project before continuing with any data changes. It is always crucial to save your projects regularly to prevent loss of edits and work. This can be accessed from the File tab or using the Ctrl and S buttons on your keyboard. I'll choose a folder and title my project and press Save. Now that the data is in Trimble Business Center, we can navigate and view it in many ways. We can fix any field blunders and prepare the data for modeling and deliverable creation. In the next video, I will edit the data and change the various project settings to prepare for modeling.